Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. I must start off by apologizing. I'm really sorry. I hate doing two build episodes in a row, but uh, I had that idea come across my mind uh, yesterday when building the new Venus lander mission about sending something into Venus orbit and then trying to bring it back to Earth. And it's... Uh, it's kind of created an itch that I need to scratch. So I figured while we've got the window coming up and we're sending the lander, why not try to send something that's just going to hit Venus orbit, collect a little science, park there for a while, and then at the next window come back? Because I would really like to do a crewed mission to do that, but I have no idea what the duration looks like or what the Delta V figures look like or any of these logistical anythings that would be super good to know if I was going to risk a Kerbal going that far out, because uh, as far as we've gone uh, in this playthrough is the moon, as far as humans have ever gone also is the moon, so it'd be nice to kind of like cross that invisible barrier and do something extraplanetary uh, in this playthrough as far, like, this soon, it's still like 1963 or something, I'm not entirely sure, but it's the 60s, at least I know that, and I'm hoping that by the 70s, in this game, we can be uh, sending Kerbals to other planets reliably. And that would be cool, but we need to see what exactly that entails. So I'm going to try to build out something pretty basic, something that will go up on an RA-9 uh, to fly to Venus, hit orbit, collect some science, and then come back. And uh, I think what is crucial to that is this Surveyor Corps uh, says that you can transfer experiments into it for returning to Earth, which means we don't actually need to bring the experiments back with us. Because, um, yeah, shedding weight as you go is going to be super crucial to making any of this happen. So I'm going to get building, and I uh, thank you so much for being patient with me. I know we haven't done any actually like space flying in a couple of episodes, but uh, I'm hoping this will be a very worthwhile mission. So thanks for hanging out. Here we go. Alright, so like I said, we're starting out with the Surveyor Corps, and uh, of course going from the last first, we need a heat shield. And so we slapped one on and sized it up, and on top of that heat shield, we'll need some, well not on top, under, perhaps? Yeah, you, you know what's happening. Parachutes, configured for Earth, triple shoots, no drogue. Antennas, and then we're going to configure this tank and size it appropriately. Uh, we've just got a single one kilonewton thruster here. And some control ports, also configured to Air Zene and N204. Yeah, paint it. That looks kind of nice. But, alright, now we're going to have to build out what's going to be our transfer and most of our return stage. So there's the, the fairing to make that look very nice. And then we'll need a tank and a control unit. Yep, going with the good old Agena here. Uh, size out the tank. Make sure it's not shielded, and we're just going to get some sizing here around this AJ-10, see how thin we can make our core. And I realize, oh yeah, I, uh, well, we'll need some solar panels. I forgot the science experiments. We'll slap the comms on there first, just because. But we're going to need to do some resizing to accommodate that film canister. Uh, this data from coming back from that will be quite nice. Also, these uh, goo experiments, one for deep space and then one for in the uh, orbit of Venus, a solar particle collector, because you get good payouts from getting those back. And I'm going to have to throw this orbital telescope on here just to balance the weight versus that uh, orbital telescope out. Now I had a debate here if I wanted to use an AJ-10 mid or an AJ-10 advanced, because the AJ-10 mid has unlimited ignitions, but a limited burn time, whereas the AJ-10 advanced has unlimited burn time, but only four ignitions. Uh, at the end of it, I chose to go with the AJ-10 Advanced. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, small corrections could be made with thruster power. So I'm going with these ridiculously oversized angled 45 degree thrusters. Uh, we'll get some paint on this. Why not? I'm not sure I'm happy with it, but I don't really care. Anyway, our Delta V numbers are not where I would like them to be. Um, debating between another stage or just utilizing this one considering we have an unlimited burn time and we've got uh, fuel transferability now with these fuel pipes so yeah, we'll set up our action groups and get everything set up there it's yeah the Venus return project and now we'll just get the uh, RA-9 underneath it and here's where the problem starts one, I know I can get the uh, everything sized appropriately, but 
and looking at the delta V numbers is just not quite right. I also can't right click on anything or make any real changes to the upper stage like I wanted to. When yeah, this is a problem. Uh, it was then that I realized that something was wrong and I was going to have to try to reload the spacecraft in order to try to get it back, but uh, it's the same problem. I still can't click on it. Okay, very sorry. I know this is a very sudden jump from uh, where we are to where we are now, but the game crashed and I pretty much lost everything. So I tried to build this as much as I could to the way it was. Uh, I'll just be going over a few things now. This is the return stage, what will actually be getting back to Earth, hopefully with all the science loaded from all of these nifty high value only if returned experiments. Uh, this stage, although it's not reflected here, has just about 2,000 meters per second delta V, so I figure it can probably uh, escape Venus's sphere of influence after a burn from this stage down here and make a correction burn all on its own to do a free return trajectory uh, back at Earth. Um, although once we decouple this, we will have no long-range comms, so that means it can't do a transfer burn. I'm really dumb. I'm... I'm extremely dumb. All right, well then, let's... I'm glad I talked through that. That could have been terrible. Let's just uh, pick these guys up. And uh, I only need two of them. Now, once we're actually making re-entry, we probably won't need them anymore, so I'm not going to be concerned if they get burned up and get torn off. So there's that. Okay, that problem solved. <laughs> Although with them retracted, they might actually, I doubt it though. Uh, they have short range comms, so once it's within uh, a couple hundred kilometers of Earth, it should be fine. Uh, this is the majority of our transfer stage and our uh, departure stage from Venus. It has these four disposable tanks, plus its own center core on an AJ-10 Advanced. The big key to this mission is this engine only has four ignitions. So, I have included these ridiculously oversized RCS thrusters using the same fuel, Arizine 50 and N2O, uh, so that we can make small corrections or a, uh, in, yeah, correction burns using just these RCS thrusters. And then, I had to make some changes to our trusty RA9, which is now the RA9B HV for heavy. Uh, which basically included upgrading this upper stage, our RL-10 stage, to a 4 meter stage. It now has 4 RL-10 engines, up from 2, and uh, upgraded thrusters, more th fuel for said thrusters, but uh, also way more fuel for this. Instead of having about 3,800 meters per second, it will now crank out 4,100 meters per second in the same seven minute burn time. That extra five seconds is for boil off. I have also upgraded the two tanks in this stage to cryogenic, so hopefully we won't be losing nearly as much. Uh, upgrades to the base part of the RA-9 just included stretching this tank up to five meters. Uh, our still our lift off thrust to, waist, thrust to weight ratio is 1.11, which should get us off the pad even if it's slower than Grandma drives to the grocery store. So uh, I'm going to slap these here fairings back on, make sure their stage is someplace appropriate, like here. Hit the save key. Okay. This mission's only going to cost us 43000 which is the most expensive thing ever launched on an RA-9 ever. And a lot of that has to do with the doubling of the engines on the RL-10 uh, Hydrolock stage. All of this is pretty much the same, but I have a feeling... It uh, might be time to think about upgrading this launcher sometime soon. 2 minutes 45, we're running at 252. Miracle we haven't seen any failures on those yet. Eh, I guess it's a reliable ass engine. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'm really sorry about two build episodes in a row. I really don't like doing that to you, but I, this is an itch I just, I, I just have to scratch. And... Uh, really, this figure is not going to be accurate. I'm not sure if 16 kilometers per second is going to be enough to go to Venus and come back, but I'm hoping that with an aero capture and with some luck that uh, we'll be able to manage. So 
uh, stay tuned. We'll probably be getting these off the ground the next episode or two. So uh, until then, I will see you next time. Thanks for hanging out.